If your apartment looks kind of like this and you want it to look a little bit more like this, keep watching because today's video is all about how to add character to your boring apartment. And I just decided about 30 seconds ago, I think I'm gonna illustrate this by kind of doing a bit of a makeover on a virtual space. My name is Midor Kia, I use they, them pronouns, and I make videos about home design. If you're interested in following along, subscribe, like, do all of the like youtube -y algorithm things. So let's get into it. Okay, the first way that you can add character to a boring space is to bring in wood. Not just any wood, but specifically like high quality vintage pieces in whatever your style is that have kind of like a medium to darker tone and have some like neutral undertones, right? Not super warm, not super yellow, but also not super like cherry, super red. And ideally the bigger the better. So think of like a giant media console that is kind of unusually large compared to the size of the TV, but I personally really love a long media console. Other great options for this are wardrobes, dressers, any sort of like sideboard or anything like that. On a similar note, vintage rugs will add so much character to your space because I don't know if you've seen a new cheap polypropylene rug next to like a vintage wool rug, but they're just not comparable. Even the ones that like do the distressing relatively well, on first glance at least, they're just not the same. There's just so much life, so much history, and um, yeah, if those rugs could talk, would definitely be curious about what they have to say. Another way to add character, which I didn't think about until someone mentioned, but if you're adding curtains, ideally floor-to-ceiling track curtains are fantastic. Um, they're also very mid-century and very much my style. But even if that's not your style, hanging your curtains like pretty much all the way to the ceiling will really help create like an architectural moment because if you think about it, a lot of our homes are just flat walls and there's really no like interesting architectural moments and visually curtains add like a really nice vertical element um, that's kind of reminiscent of like Roman columns. Especially if you choose a fabric that's a very similar shade to your wall color, it feels more like an architectural detail rather than some random fabric that you threw up there, if that makes any sense. If you don't want to do the same color as your walls and you do want to add some like color and pattern, that in and of itself will add some character to your design. And it should probably go without saying, but any curtains or any textiles in general really should be a natural material. Unless it's like very intentionally trying to not be a natural material, right? So cotton, linen, jute. I don't know if jute curtains are a thing. Um, silk, anything like that. I really love chair rails as opposed to the probably slightly more common like molding kits that we've been seeing recently. I think chair rails are cheaper, easier to install, and they tend to just like automatically look better. Whereas if you do these molding kits weird and if you don't like measure things really well and if it's not custom, it just doesn't really feel like it fits the space. I also really love that chair rails can either go very traditional or they can go a little bit more modern. And you can play around with like paint colors, you can put wallpaper above it. Like I feel like there's more options when it comes to styling around chair rails. I mentioned this in my last video, but sconces. Just sconces. Especially hardwired ones, but obviously if you're renting, then a plug-in is fine. Sconces just feel so much more architectural and built in that I feel like they just add so much character to your space. Another thing that I feel like really adds character to a boring place is art that is hung on your walls rather than like leaning against the wall or something like that and specifically small to medium art that's hung on small walls or small sections to like really draw attention to that architectural detail even if it's literally just like a little bit of a wall right that feels kind of boring but if you draw attention to it and make it feel like a little bit more of an architectural moment that will add some character i've got this little wall in my kitchen that um would be really really boring and insignificant otherwise but i hung an old vintage photo of like a school band or orchestra or something from like the 20s or 30s and then I also hung a more sculptural element on the edge of the wall. I'll, I'll pop up a picture here instead of trying to do a really bad job explaining this. If your space is like one of these modern open concept, whether it's an apartment or a McMansion or like whatever it is, if it's really big and you've got like weirdly tall ceilings and the size and proportion of the house in comparison to the size and proportion of like humans is like really out of whack. 
I'd recommend doing things to specifically make your space feel smaller. So using rugs to like section off different spaces, using room dividers or like really giant furniture pieces, or like hanging your pendant lamps extra low. Because if you've ever been in like a giant room, it's echoey, it feels weird, especially if it's like a little bit empty, but it just feels strange and it feels like a very different experience in comparison to being in a home that's like human sized. And as a bonus note, I don't recommend doing this like French inspired type of trim in most places because it will look out of place in most places. If you can do it custom, do a DIY, measure everything out very specifically, add really chunky crown molding across the top and chunky baseboards across the bottom. You'll probably be able to pull it off if you can do it on all four walls and throughout your entire house. But if you can't do that, I would just recommend not doing that. Or maybe like only doing the crown molding. Especially if you live in like a shitty apartment that was built in the 60s. Um, hi, it me. And I think there are other ways that you can really kind of help tie in that more like traditional vintage vibe. Okay, so bear with me here. Um, I'm recording this in a study room at a library, so the <laughs> audio is not gonna be great, and there's probably gonna be kids talking in the background, but I've done my best to make like a little makeshift here. I mean, actually, I'm going to take a picture right now of my little like sound dampening station. All right, here's the picture, and um, <laughs> Let's do this makeover. Okay, so I started out, I just found a room that looked like a pretty generic middle of the road rental. I decided to go with living room and dining room because I think that that will kind of make the most sense with the points that I was trying to make in this video. So I did, um, I hope you all are proud of me. I did not remove the backgrounds in Illustrator this time. Um, <laughs> I just used, uh, like the free background remover thingy that pops up when you first Google that. So yes, that saved a lot of time. I hope you're happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, as with all of my makeovers, I'm just bringing everything in, sorting everything out, making sure that I can see everything very clearly and everything is very clearly grouped. I did for some of these things, if I could, I tried to find photos of multiple angles. I wasn't really sure like what picture we were gonna find for like the backdrop of the apartment and I found all of the like furniture and stuff beforehand. Yeah, having multiple angles definitely helps with being able to put together like a decent mock-up. So I started, the first two things I started out with were this pendant light and the couch. I knew I wanted those, even just in the process of like looking for furniture and stuff. These two just really stood out to me, very much my style. And so I was like, yes, let's start with these. Let's start with what we know we love and let's just work from there. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned, I. the reason I'm doing the makeover at the end here is because I forgot to like do this screen recording of the makeover like in order of what I talked about in the video. So yeah, don't mind that. Um, <laughs> so here I am putting in some chair rails and some crown molding.
Yeah, and then like we mentioned, um, using a rug to make the spaces feel smaller and a little bit more like designated. This can also actually weirdly work in reverse too if you have a small space, using rugs to like separate out spaces or just anything to separate out spaces to make it feel like there are more spaces, if that makes sense, because the more spaces there are, the bigger it'll feel. But also if you use the same techniques of like chopping up a space into like different designated spaces in a large space, it'll help the space feel smaller. I it's, it's some weird psychology trick anyways. And then I decided on a table. I figured for this little nook, because it, it doesn't seem like a very big space for the dining room table. I chose just like a smaller round table. A lot of the tables I picked were bigger because I just, I love a big table, but I love this one. I think the pedestal will really help it, you know, be much more functional. You can actually like push chairs in and not have the legs of the table getting in the way. And then we were looking for living room chairs. I kind of went back and forth on this for a while, but then I ended up choosing these like tan upholstery ones. I liked that the material of the chair was essentially opposite of the couch, right? So the couch is leather and black. And so for the chairs, I decided I wanted something lighter and well, not leather at the very least. So fabric upholstery. And thinking about your space like this in terms of like what materials you already have in there is another thing that like just in general kind of helps add character. So here I am moving on to the sconces. I was trying to put sconces near the couch, but it just, it felt like there were too many sconces, <laughs> which usually isn't an issue, but I think it's just because of like the angle of this photo. Um, I think sconces would maybe make sense. Like say for example, if the um, television is right across from the couch, sconces would make sense on either side of the television and not feel like too much. So that's, that's where I was at with that. And then I feel like a big part of character is showing who you are as a character <laughs> through your art. And I feel like art is just one of the best ways to do this. This is all just random art that I found on Cherish. I mean, I think, I think literally everything that I found here was on Cherish just because I just wanted to keep it simple. But yeah, so here I am putting some small pieces of art. I mean, big pieces are great, obviously. I think we all know that by now, but like small pieces of art on small little walls. Cause you don't have to fill up the space, but if you, if you find like a little place, it just, it makes it more architectural and I really enjoy the way that it looks. definitely forgot to mention, <laughs> um, which probably should have been part of the main list, is paint. I think it's pretty over talked about by now, um, but yeah, paint can do wonders. For here, I just painted the ceiling. I um, Honestly, I was too lazy to like paint the entire room and like do all of that. And I feel like honestly, that's kind of <laughs> likely to be realistic in like a real world scenario. Sometimes you don't want to paint the entire place. Um, so painting just the ceiling Granted, painting ceilings are harder, but if it's just the ceiling instead of literally every paintable surface in an entire room, it's definitely a little bit less intimidating, I feel like, so. forgot about curtains and coffee tables. Um, <laughs> I was thinking a stone coffee table. I wanted something like a little bit harder of a material, um, but I actually ended up going with this glass coffee table. Um, I don't know. The stone ones just like weren't quite doing it for me.
Oh, right. I was using this background remover so much that they had me do um, the, like, are you human tests um, because the amount of pictures I removed backgrounds of was a little absurd. So I suppose that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so I forgot about um, the curtains. And then I actually, because I, I wanted some sort of room divider thing here, but the wooden solid room dividers just felt a little too much. And I really liked this little like flat panel curtain thingy that we found. I think it's a really strange, odd place to put a curtain, um, but I also think it really works. I think it helps hide like the boring gray kitchen a little bit. And, um, but it also doesn't block it off like too much. It doesn't block off the light. I did try some other tan chairs here, but I didn't like them. And yeah, I really like how the curtain ties in the blue from the lampshade and then the green in the ceiling. I don't know. Yeah, so here is the before. And here is the after. I know I say this with almost every makeover, but I'm genuinely so obsessed with how this turned out. I think, I think the dramatic transformation from before to after is just kind of wild and I would love to have this space as my home. Of course, everything I um, put in this space was from Cherish and was rather expensive. So, you know, money, capitalism, all that. So how do you think I did? Do you think I successfully added more character into this boring apartment? Let me know down below.